Hello, thank you for being in a new video. On this occasion, I have with me the OLED TV from Samsung. Its name is Samsung OLED QN6050S90C. Let's get started. If you didn't already know, Samsung didn't used to make OLED TVs until recently. And I am very satisfied and very happy with what they have managed to do through this proposal. Remember that being OLED, we could say that the contrast is practically perfect. In the other Samsung proposals, we find good contrast, but not 100% in accuracy. As what we find here, since in this case, the pixels are the ones that are illuminated without having any type of backlight on the back. But we'll talk a little bit more about the image quality later, since for now, let's talk a little bit about the design. Another advantage of not needing any backlighting on the back is that the panel can be ultra thin. Samsung has called this laser slim. And to give you an idea, it's even thinner than the remote control that I have in my hands. So we really found a very advanced aesthetic experience. The truth is that it's really surprising to see this TV in profile because of how thin it can be. This in most of its rear part. Although we will also find at the bottom a kind of cabinet where all the components come to project the image on this excellent panel. And also comes everything you need to mount the TV on the wall as it is compatible with the VESA bracket of 300 by 200 millimeters. But if you are not going to mount the TV on the wall, as is my case at the moment, you can perfectly use its bases to put it on a table. And what I like is that these bases don't come with screws, so you don't have to be adjusting them or anything. You just put them on, move them around, and it's ready to mount. In that sense, the experience is extremely good. And likewise, another relevant thing, if you're going to use this TV on a table and you're going to leave the back area exposed to view, is that it has a special cover to put on the connectors and somehow hide the cables. This cover can be easily put on and removed. And let me tell you about the connectors that we have back there. For starters, there are two USB ports. The first one is just for drawing voltage in case you need to plug in some accessory. On the second one, you could even plug in a hard drive if you want to display pictures or something similar. Next, there are two HDMI connectors. One of them has the AR feature, which will be the place where you can connect your Samsung soundbar system, which I'll tell you about in a moment more because it's kind of the ideal match. But for now, let's keep describing the ports as we come across two other HDMI ports. So we have four ports in total. Then we have an optical output for audio, LAN connector, a service connector, and finally the antenna connector in case you still watch TV with the open signal. On the other side, we have the power connector and that's it. In all cases, it brings enough channels to try to hide the cables if you are one of those who like to take care of that in the designs. In short, we are in front of an extremely nice TV with respect to its design. Remember that the bezels are practically non-existent. So it is a very pleasant experience to have this device at home. It immediately looks like a high-end TV. By the way, I forgot to mention to you that it is available in three sizes. 55, 65 and 77 inches. In this case, I have the 65 inch model here on the table. There it will also depend not only on the budget that you have, but also on the dimensions of the room where you're going to put it. But the experience is exactly the same in all of them. Now let's talk about the controls. And I speak in plural because this device can be controlled not only with the included remote control, but also with other things. But let's start with the basics and the traditional. Although in this case it is not so traditional because we are talking about the new solar cell remote control. That brings the very important feature that is charged with sunlight or even ambient light, nothing else. You don't even need to take it out in the sun. This control is part of Samsung's efforts to take care of the environment and it really is a great thing. Aside from the fact that it ends up being more convenient because you won't even have to change the batteries every so often or anything like that, it's always going to have enough power to be able to be used and as you can see I don't even need to point it, I've got the control back here and it's still moving perfectly fine. So actually, the controller is really nice, but let me show you specifically its buttons. The design is super minimalistic in that it completely forgets about the number buttons. 
It gives us the power button. We have a microphone with its respective button. Since it also supports voice control, which we'll talk about in a moment, we have a button that gives us access to quick settings and additional functions that are uncommon. Then we have the navigation buttons with the select button. Button to go back to home and also button to play or pause content. What I love about Samsung's controls are their volume and channel change buttons, as they simplify the controls immensely. These buttons slide both up and down for switching. As you can see, that's where I'm moving the volume and the same thing will happen with the channels, but there are also buttons that we can press. So if I press this button, it puts the TV on total mute. Finally, we have direct access to some of the most popular platforms, for example, Netflix, Disney Plus and Prime Video. And I like that they come with white color so that it has a fairly minimalist design the control, unlike other models that come with too many colors. We also have direct access to Samsung TV Plus, which we will talk about later. So the experience with the traditional control is super good because it is also very tiny and very compact, very comfortable. But in case you want other types of controls, Samsung also has it all figured out. You can grab your cell phone, we'll find the Samsung SmartThings app, and obviously here you can have multiple products connected. In fact, it immediately detected the soundbar that I hadn't added to this SmartThings app, so I'm going to add it just like that. And while it's being added, let me show you that also the soundbar brings its own control, although it's not totally necessary, since from the volume control of the TV, you also adjust the bar. But if you want to customize some other things or want to use the bar individually by connecting some Bluetooth device, you can use its control to adjust the volume, sound modes, the intensity of the buffer and some other little things. Finally, this bar has been added, so I'm going to put it done. And now we are going to see the TV control. Then among my list of devices appears the Samsung TV. As you can see, when I enter it, it immediately loads this part where I have the same control that I had physically. I can turn on the TV, do some other settings, and if I want more options, I can click around here to bring up the rest of the buttons. So I insist that the experience is very complete because in fact, it's also going to allow us to open applications directly from this cell phone or we can directly load the ambient mode from which we could get to configure some pattern that has our wall so that the TV tries to merge with it. So also through the cell phone, we gain new options to easily configure our TV. We also have the smart calibration function for an even more accurate color calibration using your cell phone. Finally, we also have the camera sharing option. And as you can see here behind me, this camera could be used in Google Meet to make video calls. Also to work out and see how you're exercising along with your video or whatever you're working out with. Or you could also use gestures to control the TV, which I think would be the least common, but I like that it's in these kinds of features. But as I was anticipating, in addition to having traditional control and phone control, we also have voice control available. This TV has two assistants, Alexa and Bixby. You can select which of the assistants you want to use, but you will not only be able to control the TV by voice through the TV, but through other devices. Again, if you have everything set up correctly, it will connect seamlessly to your Amazon account so that if you have any other device with Alexa, you can talk to it and control this TV. Let's give it a try. Alexa, turn off my Samsung TV. All right. As you can tell, there it worked. Alexa, turn on my Samsung TV. Let's wait for it to react. It just made a little sound and that's it. You figured it out yourself. And if I want to start controlling my TV, I can have the button here, but I don't need to always press the button. If I want to in the settings, I can tell it just by voice to always be listening, although that consumes more power. But as I say, you can enable or disable it as you like. In my case, I selected Bixby as the assistant that works inside the TV. So let's give it a try. Hi Bixby, open YouTube and search for Isa Martial. As you notice, there he is. Only in this case, it searched for history instead of Marshall Isa, but I don't accuse it. Hi Bixby, open Netflix. And that's it. We could also adjust the volume or anything else. When the TV is playing sound, it might have a little bit more trouble hearing your voice. So in those cases, you could use the control button. So it's a TV that has a lot of versatility with respect to the controls. It's all up to you as a user what you prefer, but I love the experience. Let's talk about the sound. 
starting with the TV alone. It features Dolby Atmos and a technology called Object Tracking Sound. Through this technology, if there is in the movie or in the content that you are watching something that is, for example, crossing from left to right, the TV is also going to intelligently recognize that and it's going to project the sound in those directions as well for a more immersive experience. Let's listen to a little test of the TV speakers only and then we're going to hear how it sounds with the whole sound system. But pay close attention because in this case Samsung has a feature called Q-Symphony that allows the TV to sound along with the soundbar and add-ons. Unlike other TVs where when you plug in a soundbar it will only sound through the soundbar and the TV speakers stop working. So, let's go to the test. Although remember it's not the same as listening to it live. Now notice how I can easily change the type of sound by pressing the settings button and then in this second option we'll find the setting. Here it is, it could sound just the bar, or I could select that I want both the bar and the TV. So, now let's hear what it sounds like with this selection. Really, the audio quality that you get having all this soundbar connected is spectacular. It offers 11.1.4 channels. That is to say we have 11 front channels in the soundbar in addition to the TV channels. Then we will have the buffer that is placed at the bottom and then another two channels on each side to finish filling. So, the experience is completely immersive and something you should know regarding this soundbar is that they are simply connected to the power but they are not connected to each other. This helps you have a much simpler experience because there's not as many wires running around. So between the speakers they are going to connect wirelessly and you are just going to connect them to the power. Samsung also has a technology called Space Fit Pro. With which you can recognize the environment in which you are to project the audio in the best way. And still have surround sound. So overall we can say that the experience is extremely good. The TV by itself sounds good. But obviously, if you want to take the audio to a whole new level, the soundbar is the perfect companion. The image quality is obviously going to be very good. It has 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160 pixels. And something that I like is that it has a finish that tries to avoid reflections as much as possible. Obviously maintaining excellent contrast in the picture. So even if you place this TV in a room that has a lot of lighting, as is my case at the moment, you're going to have an excellent display. It is also worth noting its Neural Quantum 4K processor through which 20 neural networks are executed to try to optimize the detail of all the content it is projecting. Let's say that in an intelligent way it can detect if there is a face or various types of objects to optimize them in level of detail and take advantage of all the 4K resolution. It also has a feature called Real Depth Enhancer, through which it can detect the areas where your eyes tend to focus when you are watching content and enhance the depth of the image to give you a more realistic feel. The technology of this screen is OLED, therefore, as I anticipated at the beginning of the video, we have a perfect contrast. Color saturation is very good and excellent viewing angles. In fact, if you're going to view this content from the side, it's still going to have good brightness, good color and everything. So it's an ideal experience for family viewing. It has quantum HDR technology, so it supports HDR 10 plus content. This means that the darker areas it can brighten up with enough light for you to make them out. And the most vibrant areas of content of this style can also have a very high brightness. It also has up to 144 hertz, although this is more focused on gaming thanks to its motion accelerator Turbo Pro technology, which we'll talk more about later. But for now, let me end this segment by mentioning that it has automatic brightness. So if the room gets dark, the screen is also going to decrease its brightness and vice versa. So it's a feature that's also very nice. You should also know that it has different picture modes depending on what your taste is. 
In this case, I'm viewing HDR compatible content and so the optimized mode immediately selects the HDR setting. However, you also have an eye friendly mode in case you want to change it. As you can see, there are two modes available for you to select which one you prefer. But something I was forgetting to mention is that it also has Pantone validated certification to ensure color accuracy. So really the viewing experience is very good. Now let's talk about the TV operating system, but for that too, I always like to do the power on test so you can see how quickly it can start working. So we press the three, two, one button, and as you notice, there it is turning on. That's it, and we can start using the TV. In this case, it took a few extra seconds because I waited for the TV to turn off completely. If I turn on the TV immediately after it turns off, it will turn on much faster, as you can see, because it was in standby. That's going to depend on your power consumption settings as well, but even when the TV is completely turned off, it comes back on very quickly and the experience really, as you can see, is very smooth. When you're browsing through all the content that's available. Also, Obviously, we're going to have access to all the streaming platforms that you want. Here we have the list of apps where, remember, you can download new ones. So you can really get exploring and you're going to have lots and lots of apps available over here. TikTok, Paramount+, Plus, Apple Music, NVIDIA GeForce Now, Twitch, Star+, Plus, HBO Max. I've got the user manual as well. Obviously, there's also Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, YouTube, Alexa, Internet, Google Meet, Spotify, Bix, Xbox. Well, we have too many platforms to be able to access. So the system is really very good. As you notice, first it loads the multimedia section where we have direct access to various suggested content from the platforms that you have installed. But we are also going to notice that here we can switch to the game section where we will talk later about the content that is available. But we are also going to find the ambient mode. In case you want to use your TV as a decoration at certain times, you could also get to use all these presets that we have available. Or as I told you a moment ago, through the cell phone, you can also configure so that the pattern of your wall is transferred to your TV. In this case, I had never used this background, so that's why you're noticing that it's trying to download content. And it also adjusts the lighting so that it doesn't look like a screen, it looks like decoration. So the system really is very good. But what about wireless projection? If you have a Galaxy cell phone, obviously the experience is going to be much more convenient because you just turn on Smart View and you're going to get this TV. You tell it that you want to start multi-view mode or full screen mode. You as the user choose. In this case, I selected multi-view. And notice how in this multi-view mode, I have my screen on the side and I can still see the content. This could be useful for those people who like to follow a live event and be commenting. So that they're enlarged, they can see the comments. It's a feature I haven't seen on other TVs. Now I connected it in full screen mode so you can see how the projection is there without any problem. If you have cell phones of other brands, however, you can also connect to project wirelessly. It even comes with Apple's AirPlay technology so you can project your iPhone screen without any problems. Note that you also have available the web browser where you can open any type of application. And one of the most important points to highlight in Samsung TVs is Samsung TV Plus, the platform where Samsung gives you access to more than 80 channels for free. You don't have to pay anything or put your card in or absolutely nothing. You simply open the application and you can start exploring all the channels that are available. All these channels are downloaded from the internet, so you can change channels as if you were changing channels on your TV, similar to what happens with the open signal, but in this case all the channels are from the internet, so they have a considerably high quality and you have access to a lot of content without having to pay anything extra. Of course, in this case, the content will vary depending on the regions. In this case, you are watching the content that is available in Mexico, in case you are watching me from somewhere else. And by the way, I also forgot to tell you that at the bottom we have the connected devices. Here we will be able to directly access smart things or access other things that we have connected. 
If we have a smart doorbell, for example, it can show us here while we are watching a movie when the doorbell rang and the image of that camera. I'm going to log into SmartThings and see how the devices that I have in my home connected to my SmartThings account show up. For example, I might turn on the light here in the living room. Let's put the button on it to turn it on. I don't know if it ever got noticed, but it did turn on. Another thing I could do would be to turn on my air conditioner or any other device that I have connected to smart things. So it's also an important element of the whole Samsung ecosystem. Finally, let's move on to talk about the gaming experience. For that, let's open the Game Hub, which is a completely new section where Samsung also gives you some information so that you can know what you can take advantage of. In this case, I previously logged into Xbox so that we can use Game Pass and we can play in the cloud. If you have a physical console connected, it will also show up here. It automatically detects it and automatically places it in this game hub as well. Plus, you can also use your NVIDIA GeForce Now session, although I don't have an account there. But it definitely does let you play in the cloud. You can wirelessly connect your controller. Notice how in this case I have my Xbox controller connected and it connects directly to the TV. I can launch any game if I have the Game Pass or GeForce Now subscription. And this without the need to install any updates to the games, which is something that personally always happens to me. So I think this is one of the features that I could consider more attractive, at least for a user with my characteristics. Watch how I ran the game and everything is running in the cloud. In this case, it gives me the opportunity to run the game from either of these two platforms. As I tell you, I have my Xbox Game Pass account, so let's run this content from Xbox. And as you can see, there I am already running the content from the cloud. The truth is that the experience is considerably good for someone who is not so demanding in this section of gamers. If you are a specialized gamer, you are still going to prefer the experience of having a connected console. But as I say, in my case, this feature is very good for me because I don't play games all the time. And every time I want to play, I get an update that takes hours to download. And in this case, the experience of playing in the cloud is much smoother because you don't have to wait for an update or anything like that. And as you realize, it's confirmed here that I don't play a lot of games. So, you can access all this kind of content and many more games with your subscription, depending on the application you are going to use. But really, the experience seems to me to be extremely good for user types like me. If you press and hold the Xbox button on the controller, you'll notice that a special option will appear on the side, from which you can easily start listening to Spotify, whether it's music or a podcast while you're playing. You can also access video game highlights and you can access sound and picture settings. And it also has a low latency mode so the response is extremely fast. So for me, cloud gaming is super cool. Although the image quality is also going to depend a lot on your internet connection. In my case, it looks as if I were playing a video on YouTube. Obviously, as I anticipated, you will find the highest quality by connecting a specific console, which is what we will do next. Because yesterday I downloaded all the necessary updates to be able to use my console. In this case, it is already running from the Xbox that I have connected directly to the TV. So the experience is going to be with more definition. As I say, cloud gaming depends on your internet connection, but in this case, being connected directly to the console, we will find more definition without a doubt. In this case, we will find a very good response. And before you lose in the game, I must also remind you that if you hold down the play or pause button, you will also be able to access new settings with this bar. For example, you can change the picture mode. You could also change the image ratio if you are playing with a connected PC. In this way, you could have an ultra-wide mode, which I will show below. Sato. This would be the ultra-wide mode with 32 to 9 of your aspect ratio. Many might think that it's wasting black line space, but it's actually giving you a lot more side view. Remember, this mode is only compatible with a connected computer, so this doesn't work with consoles. But in order for it to be in this format, you have to adjust the computer's resolution. 
I find it at 3840 by 1080 pixels to fit this way. I want you to kind of notice the difference of how you have much, much more width here. And notice now how I'm going to change to another ratio. Although for a perfect fit, you also have to change the resolution on the computer. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to change it from 16 to 9. In this case, there will still be a little black line on the sides, but that's because you would have to adjust the resolution specifically on the computer to fill it well. However, notice how you lose a lot of horizontal angle. Although you obviously take advantage of the full screen, so you gain more dimensions, let's say in the elements, but you lose horizontal width. I think gamers will perfectly understand this feature and how useful it can be to have a much larger panorama to the sides. The change is obviously not instantaneous, but look at all the amount of information we now have on the side. Undoubtedly it is a very attractive feature, very good. Although remember that it is only compatible when you have a computer connected. We will also find a minimap zoom option. As in this case, there are some games that have a small map in the corner. So you can select this option and you can turn it on and tell it that it's on the right. And see how you can choose there the option to make it appear big. So this way you can get to take advantage of some of the content a little bit more. Obviously it will depend entirely on the type of game you have, but if in this case you want to be more aware of where you are located, you could map it there. With some content we also have a feature called Motion Plus, and we also have access to more configuration. For example, you can have a virtual scope. I'm going to select it to be red and watch how a red crosshair now appears in the center. In case there are games that don't allow you to enable the crosshairs, then they also allow you to have this kind of feature to add precision to the experience. In fact, that crosshair can also be configured from this game bar that I was showing you. We also have the type of sound and finally more help to see more options. So, the gaming experience to me seems to be well complemented with these software tools so you can enjoy your game even more and you can customize your experience as much as possible. So wherever you look at this TV, the truth is that it delivers on pretty much everything we could ask for. We're just finishing up this video review, but let's do a quick recap. The design is ultra slim with this laser slim. We have supreme picture quality thanks to the technology of the technology. We have a very good sound that you can complement perfectly with the Samsung soundbar, making the experience even greater. We also have an excellent system that responds fast, compatible with all applications, compatible with various devices for wireless screen projection, and finally has these kinds of features to help gaming. So, the truth is that the experience is very good. Plus support for cloud gaming, which I was forgetting to mention to you in this review. So, I really like the experience. For the moment, this has been all regarding this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, you know you can let me know, and we'll see you next time.